we are... Not we! No! Oh. <laughs> I am going to build a boat! A dinghy! A subcategory sub of boats. Here we go! Feeling pretty excited. Learned my first lesson already along the way. My name is Aladino. I am a boat builder and a sailor. <laughs> Damn it, can that be said? <laughs> These days, uh, it's true though. I am an admirer also. It's looking mighty cool. Admirer of boats and craftsmanship. The past few years, I have been working on boats. Wow! Living on boats. And sailing them uh, with my wife. There she is, and we've been on many very cool adventures from the Mediterranean up to the North Sea. And right now we are undertaking a really big project, upgrading our boat to a bigger one. It's a year this boat has been standing here waiting for us. We will also need a tender, a dinghy. It was really hard for me to decide on a specific boat to build for this project. There were a few criteria. Uh, one was that it has to row well, it has to sail well. I am really trying to keep weight down and of course the measurements have to be right. I'm not a fan of having too much clutter on the decks. And ultimately, yeah, it had to be pleasing to the eye. It had to have lines that I like. Then of course there is availability. So the boat we chose is called uh, Scout and it is supplied by Duckworks in Port Townsend. This is the kit. That's the kit. This and yeah, that's the other clue. It is a kit. Yeah. It looks like a really interesting design. Not too many have been built yet, uh, but I do like the simplicity. Um, it especially emphasizes the low weight and it has very pretty lines. Um, it has two planks that meet in lap strake fashion. It has a nice angled transom. I'm pretty excited. The rig is super simple. Uh, it uses a windsurfer mast. The dagger board is offset, so you have a really big cockpit well, which um, gets me dreaming about adventures where you can actually even bring a mattress and a sleeping bag and sleep inside the cockpit well. Overall, uh, this design ticked many boxes. I guess the risk is that it is a bit on the big, bigger side, so we'll really have to cross our fingers to hope that it fits on the boat. <laughs> So in this box we have a beautifully machined CNC kit. Really well packaged, <laughs> which is good if you're getting this transported. And you have to be careful. Ooh, is this the final one? Yeah. So we chose to go with a kit, first of all because of the time constraint and the second one is uh, out of logistical reasons. I want specific plywood for example, I want to build it out of okume. If I had three months instead of one then we could have found out all the logistical parts. But I also, yeah, I, I wanted to keep it simple in that regard. The other benefit of going with a kit is I get exactly the material that I need. I get six millimeter plywood for the bottom, I get four millimeter plywood for the planks, and then the parts that are foam. It's just what you need all in one box. It comes with a manual, but I was told that it's not 100% complete yet. As I said, not many of these boats have been produced yet, so I will read it, but then also as I work, um, I can email with Duckworks. I'll be a little bit of a guinea pig on the manual side of things. Well, Dini, it looks like you've got yourself a big puzzle. I did. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> And I am super grateful to have a place to build it in. It's a building that Maya's dad built from scratch. Uh, it's super pretty. And yeah, this will be 
my workshop uh, to build the dinghy. <laughs> so exciting! Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of glass and epoxy work. The foam is structural and it is part of the dinghy. It can be seen as flotation, but it's the biggest reason of why this dinghy is gonna be lighter than others. Now, what we see here, this is the dagger board, of course. Mm -hmm. This is the kick-up rudder. Uh, both are kick-up. And well, these are the, the gunnels, uh, pieces like that. But one, the biggest component that is foam is the deck. There's a lot of weight saved there, but it is an integral part and a very strong deck. So underneath there is also six mil plywood, which is for the bottom, for example. And then there is four mil plywood, uh, which is for the planks and other parts. It's really made to be strong where it needs to be and light where it can be. So this is actually the very first step. I sorted through the parts and I kind of piled them into uh, sections, uh, like all the pieces that will make the rudder went together, all the pieces that will make the dagger board went together. And on the table now are all the ones that have a puzzle joint, which is this here, this beautiful wave. So that means that it's going to be a long plank that will have to be joined here. There is a bit of prep involved. It's not a mandatory step. I'm actually sanding all of these panels slightly. These are fresh out of the CNC machine and there's all these little fuzzies. I don't know if there's a technical term for them. As I said, not strictly necessary, but why am I doing it? Uh, first of all, I am a little fuzzy. I just do um, extra steps sometimes, uh, but the other one is after putting the puzzle joints together, then the next step is going to be uh, glassing all of the planks. Fiberglass can stand up, stand proud if it has something underneath that pokes it. It's just uh, gonna make the whole process a little easier. So the construction method of this dinghy is called the stitch and glue method. So first you have to assemble all the components and then you dry fit those together with the zip ties until the boat is in the desired shape. Then you use epoxy glue to permanently bond it together. Previously it was done by wires, uh, but now many folks have adopted uh, using zip ties instead. Never built a stitch and glue boat myself. I'm familiar with the materials and the techniques, but I've never have done a stitch and glue project. All the pieces are made smaller so that they fit in the box, but now you actually have to bring them back to their desired length and shape. So there's all these puzzle joints, and that's the first thing to, to assemble so this okume plywood here is pretty soft, it soaks up epoxy readily and uh, there will be glass added onto both sides of most of these planks. The manual actually says that uh, you could also use CNA glue, which I never have before, so I'm sticking with my tested methods. Or do you watch the movie? There was only a half hour left. Yeah. Oh. We, all, we all died at the end. Dylan would like it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like to keep it tidy. Especially since we are showcasing. Cool. Yay. Hey. Awesome. Now those, those are your finished planks. Yeah. Well, <laughs> not There's finished still yet. more puzzle joints to go though, right? Totally. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. Quite a few. It's more that this was kind of what fit on the table. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for helping. I'm not helping. I'm okay. just, I'm just going to look. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go to bed. Tomorrow this uh, will have hardened and I can separate each, individ in each individual full-size plank. But I'm very happy with this process. Yeah, really, really precise uh, joints, uh, really nice kit. 
So, curious to see it all tomorrow. All right, things should have cured. So far, it looks perfect. And again, I feel like I'm doing overkill. Um, this is not strictly necessary to make it, to send in this nice. Um, just a little bit of prep work would be enough, but I am trying to approach it as if I would clear varnish it. And then I feel like this would give the best results. It is challenging for me to find the balance. Um, I am a bit of a perfectionist, so I know that this step seems unnecessary and maybe I'll kick myself later when I'm running out of time, but I'm at the very start of the build now, so I do feel like I still do have the time for these things. And uh, yeah, we'll see how much I regret it later. But um, so far, these um, approaches have led to good results, so I'm gonna stick with them. The second batch of puzzle joints or parts in general that I assembled was the bottom. And the bottom has puzzle joints towards the front but then it's also split in half along the center line without any joints uh, to put together. So there it's just a blunt seam that has to be epoxy together. And now a little check. Second pass of epoxy in case there's parts where it absorbed a lot. But also Okume. This is quite high quality stuff, so there isn't really voids. Um, it's just because end grain absorbs more than other parts. Okay, and now I still have leftover. I'm gonna mix in some sawdust right now, and then I'm gonna give it another little sweep of thickened epoxy. I just love using the protein containers that Maya's mom uses. She's a powerhouse. <laughs> She's a marathonist, an iron woman. Yeah. I don't need this stuff. I'm just using my fingers and very little of my brain in the workshop. <laughs> Duckwork supplied me with this sawdust and it's so fine and perfect and it has a really nice color to it. Assembly time! I'm gonna throw this into my epoxy uh, acetone cover just so I can use it tomorrow. Okay, assembly time. So here, the bottom is get, is coming together.
getting the puzzle joints done is at the same time uh, a very important step, but also just the beginning. And I wanted, of course, to apply some force <laughs> while gluing them together so that the epoxy do just doesn't just flow through, so it was pretty challenging. So what I did is I used nails instead, and I, I, and I nailed straight into my table um, at an angle uh, so that it would drive those two halves together. And those holes were already uh, drilled inside of the plywood pieces because they are to be used for the zip ties in the future steps. feels very good to have the puzzle joints together. Uh, this is a bit of a funny step in the sense of um, there wouldn't be the need for these puzzle joints except for you ordering a kit and it needs to fit in the box so that it can be shipped. So um, just in a bit here I will focus very heavily on glassing all the parts uh, but that will require most of the table again so I just continued with some steps uh, looking ahead uh, that also require me to have a big table and that is the deck. Even though it comes in much later I prefer to just uh, build it now. The deck is made of a quarter inch foam which um, I will will convert into what is called sandwich. That means you will get fiberglass on either side. So that will make it stiff and strong. Ooh, they are so flexible. I'm afraid to break them. But soon they will be one solid structural part. So here it is all together, um, I just pressed the puzzle joints together gently and this is actually where I tried out the CA glue for the first time and it worked the charm. Um, actually for a kit um, I think I prefer using CA glue now than epoxy because epoxy as we all know just takes so long curing. So CA glue, I'm a big fan, um, especially because there's still glass making it all structural. So I don't trust CA glue as much as I trust epoxy yet, but I feel like for this purpose um, I'm, I'm happy to have learned about it. So the deck is made of a foam which name I forget and it's not a kind of foam that I've ever worked with. It's a little harder, it doesn't compress right away if you would kneel on it for example, which is really nice. but. It's a little challenging to work with initially, and that is, um, it doesn't shape too nicely, so you have to knock down the fibers with, uh, with a sander initially, and the manual suggests adding fairing compound and then glassing right over the fairing compound, which then uh, takes up all these voids and it gives you a flat surface. And while I agree about this approach, there is one slight difference in how I tackled it in the past. Um, I, have, I have glassed over foam, but the one thing that I do differently is that I wait uh, in between the two steps. I add fairing compound and then I sand it down uh, to give me a flat surface and then I glass over it. So basically uh, I'm taking longer. So, so I did it as the manual suggests, and that is to apply the fiberglass wet over the wet fairing compound. I was willing to try out this uh, new method, so I went ahead.
The next day, as I walked into the workshop, though, and glanced at my foam, I was not happy with it. It had trapped a lot of air in between. Uh, the fairing compound had settled lower than the peaks of the foam. Uh, so it wasn't really an even surface and uh, yeah, uh, the glass wasn't really laying flat and it had a lot of air bubbles, which yeah, is no good. Uh, this method could have totally worked. Sometimes it's just uh, about what hardener you're using and how quickly things set and how thick you mix the fairing compound. But I decided to flip the decks over and I decided to go back to my trusted method of how I usually do this and I was pretty confident that that would work. Um, so I added the fairing compound and then went to bed and letting it cure and so the next day I could review it, uh, sand it flat and then I would have a perfect surface to add the glass on top of. Um, of course, I was still crossing my fingers that there wouldn't be any air bubbles since this was kind of my last attempt, my last chance. Uh, what I was a little bummed about is that I used 6 ounce glass instead of 4 ounce like for the rest of the build. Because I wanted the extra strength and impact resistance on the top sides of the deck, but the kit provides enough 6 ounce glass only to cover the deck once, so that meant Having to flip it all over now, I wouldn't have the 6 ounce glass on top, but I was still willing to go with that if the other side turns out better. I started sanding uh, my fairing compound this morning, but it wasn't quite sandable yet. Um, it was gumming up the sandpaper a little bit. So the other parts that could be prepared in the meantime is the transom. And right there on the edge of the table is the keel. Um, that is made up of three pieces of ply. So I'm gonna glue these pieces together. Transom consists of a sandwich construction, but uh, it is sandwiched in plywood instead of glass. So this is the very end of the transom, then there is a foam piece that goes on top here, and then there is another plywood piece that will come on top of it. They come with pre-drilled holes and dowels uh, that help you in aligning all the parts and uh, of course I was uh, trying my best because uh, component prep uh, is very important in the later stages of how everything will fit together. On one side the knees are to support hardware for the main sheet and on of course the most important reasons is the knees um, are structural in helping uh, hold together the transom and the planks. The transom is coming along nicely, uh, now it's not such a mess um, and it is more visible. The foam deck has uh, cured enough for me to sand the fairing compound that was on top. 
and now it is ready to be glassed. I have done all the prep work already. The glass is cut out and laid out here and I've also cut out peel ply to go over at the very end. Um, I have very high hopes. Uh, so far it's looking great. It's a very very even surface. Yeah, I think this side might end up uh, getting nicer results. And I am tempted to then be using the nicer side on top of course, um, which by design would be the underside, but the only thing that I have to move is the daggerboard slot, since I believe that everything is symmetrical, but I'll double check with the designer. And first we've got to put some glass on and see if it actually ends up turning smoother. <laughs> It is really hard to know if I am up to schedule or not. I just do my best and uh, that's something that I will know better uh, towards the end. Ta-da! The reveal! And I am indeed very happy. I was super happy, of course, having been able to save the situation by flipping the decks around and having one nice side to choose from. Um, it's just in my character to still be bummed about the reality of having messed up one side and having the 6 ounce glass on the not the desired side. Uh, that's just me, but I was uh, very happy to have uh, rescued the situation. So very often though the take is that uh, a job done well requires time. So when working on a schedule, that's the challenge. Epoxy can be tricky, especially if in big batches, um, especially if you're working in a hot climate, it can kick off really fast and if you ruin your one go at those pieces. Uh, it's not like you're gonna get another deck somewhere else easily. But despite this little uh, glitch here with the air bubbles on one side of the deck, I'm very happy how all the pieces are coming together. A lot of these tasks are quite repetitive and slow and I guess uh, the way to keep engaged mentally for me is thinking about the adventures ahead uh, that, th that we will have with this boat. So right now I have the bottom, the decks, the transom, the knees and the deck ready. Uh, the planks um, are assembled but not glassed as of yet. The glass is laid out onto the planks that will get a 4 ounce fiberglass. Now one thing is that these plywood planks are that thin that they can easily bend up a little bit and you really want them to lay flat on the table. So a trick that I took away from the manual was to use hot glue and as you can see they're all laying perfectly flat. So by glassing all the plywood components you are adding a lot of strength to the actual plywood and you're also waterproofing it and adding some chafe resistance. Uh, you're also retaining the wood grain and gloss and uh, all of that. Like, yeah, it's like uh, you're preserving them. But that is why there is also pressure on this task. So I will also be coming back into the workshop to really uh, minimize air bubbles. I don't want any air bubbles in it.
I have to say I was mighty pleased with myself when I walked in and saw all the nice uh, glass on the planks that had worked out perfectly. I am stoked right now. Uh, all the pieces are almost ready to start with assembly and it has gone well. Today I've made the last lamination. This stack of components is ready to go. I have drilled out all the holes and I've sanded the edges. I only have to prepare the bottom. Drilling the holes, cleaning up the edge. I have almost completed the mise en place of all the components. I'm getting very excited about stitching them together. So altogether, I am about 60 hours into the project. Um, I was uh, keeping a log and um, I'm very excited for the next episode where we're still starting to put all the components together. actually uh, start assembling the boat. Um, first the keel goes on the bottom and then the pla planks are attached to the bottom and uh, so a uh, whole uh, three-dimensional three shape uh, emerges. And I feel like that stage will come together very quickly and then I will finally know what this design actually looks like in person. Thanks for watching. This was part one of a three part series and uh, subscribe so you don't miss the one who's coming out next Friday. Every Friday there will be another uh, new series and uh, maybe we'll attach a fourth one which will be about going on an adventure on this boat and actually sailing it too. Thanks you, thank you so much for watching. Uh, special thank you to our patrons, an extra, extra big thank you to these names now appearing on the screen for always going above and beyond to making sure that these productions keep uh, being produced. Thanks to Brian and Sharon uh, for hosting us and for lending me the workshop and creating havoc in here <laughs> to build the dinghy that is really very much appreciated. Thanks to Maya for the magnificent editing. See you next Friday.